Welcome to Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. In our Los Angeles Bureau today, we are joined by Ted Liu. Mr. Liu is a member of the United States Congress representing significant portions of Los Angeles County, including the Westwood area where we find the beautiful VA complex. Uh, it's been in the news a lot lately about the proper use of the facilities. Uh, when it was given to the government, the deed was very clear. It needed to be for veterans' purposes. Lawsuits were filed. What's happened? Very pleased that the president signed my legislation to mm. allow the VA master plan to go forward. That's going to make sure that all leases are veterans-centric. It's also going to have at its full build out over 1200 units of housing for homeless veterans. It's going to improve the delivery of medical services to veterans and it's going to be what the VA calls a crown jewel for other VAs to copy. So very excited. What does veterans centric mean? And I'm speaking sure. to you, I guess yeah. you're not a veteran, you're still active, is that right? I'm still in the reserves. Okay, does that make you a veteran or active? Probably both. Both, it, exactly. Yeah. But what does veteran centric right. mean? It means in the past, for example, they would have a lease with a rental car company okay. that had no relationship to veterans. So it was simply to generate revenue. You can't do that anymore. But Every lease there has right. to have some sort of service or benefit to veterans. And the VA will decide on each individual lease what are the benefits to veterans and whether they want to approve it or not. But let's play it out if we can. Sure. So let's say we rent to the rental car company. Right. Revenue comes in. Could that revenue not benefit veterans? Well, it would actually go to sort of a general pot of money. Okay. And in the past, that's what they were doing, and that's why they got sued, because, because it was not benefiting veterans directly. Now, if the rental car company set it up such that they only rented to veterans at really reduced rates, that may considerably be okay. okay. That's not what they did. Here we have a new master plan, we have a law in place that's going to make sure every lease is veteran centric and it's going to provide homeless housing right. for a lot of veterans. And I want to talk about homeless, but I want to ask you, we know UCLA has a yes. baseball diamond there. We know my daughters play soccer there. Right. I'm being parochial, but I can't help right. it. Uh, what's going to happen to those uses? So the VA will work with each individual leaseholder. They've already exited a bunch of leaseholders okay. because they couldn't meet the veteran centric. Right. With UCLA, they were able to come to an agreement where it was veteran-centric. So okay. UCLA is doing these amazing things to help veterans, seven different areas, ranging from mental health to um, additional facilities and programs I just see. for veterans. So it's going to be a win-win for everybody. And what about that athletic field at the end, which has been so popular for so many West Los Angeles kids? So you're going to have the VA deciding with each particular I lease. See how it benefits veterans, veterans' access to right. sports facilities. And as I understand it, that's what they're looking at. And it is that the kids, that they tend to want to use it in the evening. The veterans will use it during the day. I know I'm being parochial. But what's also interesting, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it, a lot of folks don't realize that the Brentwood School, um, part of it is on VA, VA property. So they're yes. having to enter into discussions to make sure. That is correct. Right, that so there's a connection. Exactly. Every leaseholder will have to right. do that. I also do want to acknowledge the plaintiffs that sued the VA that caused mm -hmm. this to happen in the first place, the courage of their plaintiff veterans, um, people like uh, Bobby Schreiber, who helped out. The Bobby uh, Schreiber. Yes. Right. The law firm Munger, Toes, right. and Olson that did a great job bringing a lawsuit. Didn't you work and at Munger many years I ago? I remember that. Yeah. I used to be a lawyer, so I remember these things. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, but the new VA Secretary, Bob McDonald, did a great job settling the case and going forward with this master plan where we had a lot of stakeholders involved for a long period of time and most of them came to agreement. So it's really a broad coalition now in support what of this I'm master plan. What I'm wondering is, I mean, look, the VA site, it's such a crown jewel, and I would hate for it to become kind of encapsulated in itself. And we don't get the interaction between non-veterans and veterans. That's why I think, look, my kids don't go to Brentwood, but I know many who do. And Brentwood's really working to create relationships. UCLA is working to create relationships. Correct. Are we going to see more of that? Absolutely. And that's a great point. It's going to be a VA campus that has a lot of connections, not just internally, but also externally uh, with all of these different leaseholders. It's going to be a, a good plan. I want to talk about veterans homelessness. As you know, the homeless crisis in California is severe, especially in LA County. But as you may also know, if there's ever a bright spot, 
it's veterans homelessness. Veterans homelessness is dropping. Yes. Um, we've gone from 3,000 in 2016. Uh, no, we went from 4,400 in 2015 to 3,000 in 2016. In San Diego County, we see similar numbers. What? Why is? What's going on? Why do we see the actual decrease of veterans homeless while other homeless right. are increasing? Well, so in terms of veterans homelessness, there's a concerted effort with the federal, state, and local government to house veterans who are homeless. Mm -hmm. And there are specific federal programs. Uh, one is called a hud Vash voucher right. that provides housing plus money for services. It's been shown to be quite effective. I wish we had federal programs for all homeless. Mm. We don't have that yet, but we do have it for veterans homeless, and we're increasing the number of vouchers. We have a lot of cooperation uh, with Mary Garcetti, with right. the county supervisors, and we're getting more revenue in to deal with veterans homelessness. That's why you're seeing it drop. But my question becomes then, since we know which programs can work, because right. it's working in the veteran space, can we use best practices to apply them right. to the non-veteran homeless population? Absolutely. I would have a hud vash voucher for non-veterans homeless. I remember uh, the Los Angeles Times ran an extended series about climate change and what certain oil companies knew about climate change decades ago. Right. If I'm correct, ExxonMobil was highlighted in that Absolutely. series. Right. And the series suggested that ExxonMobil knew well about the dangers of climate change. And the ramifications of that have now been clear. Uh, ExxonMobil is under investigation. Why don't you tell yeah. us about that and yes. where we go from here? The LA Times and Inside Climate News the, did these investigations that showed that ExxonMobil scientists in the 1970s confirmed climate change was happening and that was largely being caused by the burning of fossil fuel. In the 70s? In the 70s. Wow. Ex their top executives, went exactly the other way, misled the public, started funding climate change deniers, and started denying climate change. But it was worse than that. They then internally took this secret knowledge that they had and planned to take advantage of climate change by going to, for example, drill more in the Arctic, where they knew the ice was gonna melt faster. This reminded me of what the tobacco companies did, where they lied to American public about the health risks associated with cigarettes in order to sell more of their product. They were sued and they lost. ExxonMobil is now under investigation for the same thing. The SEC is investigating. Yes. Um, that's an interesting agency to investigate. I guess it would be th they've lied to their investors. Is exactly. That... The public filings right. were misleading. I wrote a letter last year asking SEC to investigate. Very pleased that they're doing it now. But what about the Department of Justice? Would that be an appropriate agency to investigate? Absolutely. So I wrote a letter to the Department of Justice as well, along with other members of Congress. They referred it to the FBI, FBI. to do the investigation. Why? So, because they're the investigative arm of the Department of Justice. So now we're going to follow up with the FBI to uh. see if they're going to investigate ExxonMobil. Where do we go from here? I mean, this is pretty serious. Yes. Assuming the allegations are accurate, ExxonMobil could be in a whole lot of hurt. Absolutely. It's fraud. Hmm. That blatant. Yes. You'll come back? Absolutely. He is Ted Lou. He is a member of the U.S. Congress. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are coming to you from Los Angeles. We thank you so much for joining us on Local Edition.